We're here at the Lars Anderson Auto Museum, and uh, there's more here than just cars. Turn around and take a look at this door here, baby. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's beautiful. I know, isn't that awesome? Just for, for a minute, like, you know, you think about the cars are in here. Right. Put the hinge on that. Huh? The hinge on that door. The work on that door. That's amazing. If the museum is half as good as the work on the workmanship here, I'm telling you something else, and I think it is. But that's amazing, the workmanship on that door. Just wanted to show you that. Do you want to open it? Um, I don't need to open it. I just had to be flabbergasted over the hinge work on that. Yeah. Um, someone did a lot of forge work there, yeah. the design and the cut. Um, that was before we had plasma cutters, MIG welders, anything like that. You know, that was all done with forgery. That's absolutely awesome. And even the, the handle that pulls and opens it up. Amazing. This place is more than just a car museum, believe me. Uh, nice little 30 roadster. Sort of what we're doing at home right now, eh, Jolene? Yeah. Yeah, sort of what we're doing right home. Got a nice windshield. I don't know if it's called an Evolve windshield, but the little windshield. Looks like it's got a 40s dash in it. It's really cool. Just in a red oxide primer. You know, it's got the little uh, caps on the exhaust if you want to make it loud or if you want it run it. Whatever. This is a Curtis. Curtis 500. This thing is supercharged. Crazy. That thing would. It looks like it's made of aluminum too, but the inside of this fender, it's all aluminum. That thing would be some light. Wow. Gorgeous. Not sure. This is 1950, I think. 1951. I love the paint on that. The paint on that's something else. If it's not something, it's something beautiful. I like how the hardwood floors show off the cars. You know, every place we usually go, it's cement or marble or tile. I like the hardwood floors. There's a lot of character here in the hardwood floors. 36 Ford, paint on that is just stunning. Um, it's lowered, I don't think it's chalk, but it's, it's a stunning car. It's one of my favorites, a 36 Ford. I'd like to do one someday. I don't know if I want to do it the way they do it, but I would like to do one. Ed Roth. You know, Ed Roth, you know, I watched a little thing on him. He became famous because he was one of the first men that ever started doing murals on t-shirts. Amazing, eh? He, he did murals on t-shirts and it shows him up there, you know, blowing paint through his gun. It must have got plugged up and he was painting the rat thing. And he made the rat thing because he didn't like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> you know, he didn't like Mickey Mouse. You have a Mercedes over here. And as, you, as you're looking at the video, Look at the workmanship we're out here in the building that we had. And this building was a horse barn, a horse stables for horses. I guess that uh, carriages would come in this front door and then the horse, horses would be back here. Amazing. This car here, something, <laughs> something else, eh? Something else. I like how they got the Buick drum brakes, how it's got an independent suspension in the rear on that car. That is something else. Like, you know, it's got and the brakes are on the inside. They look like Buick drum brakes, which I love too. Got the fins on them. Make it look cool. You know, cool the brakes down. A nice little 32 Ford. It's channeled. So they say West Coast and East Coast are a little bit different. Um, East Coast, you would channel your car. West Coast, you would have chopped your car or lowered the suspension. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of cool. The soapbox car here, I want to show you this here. Now when you see that round, when you see this round is here, you see that round like that? And it's a piece of wood, and that was painted, and with no cracks, you would not know that that was a bunch of pieces of wood. If you did the exact same thing with metal, you could manipulate it with a small piece of metal welded together, you can do that. And uh, the gentleman that works here, that we were talking to, he said, do you do a lot of English, a lot of English wheel and, and uh, sandbagging? Well, I do a little bit of it, but not a, not a whole lot because I like to manipulate the metal to make it look the way I wanted to do it. You know what I mean? I will cut it a certain way that I can get the shape that I want. And you can do that, believe me. Let's take a roll one here. We have all kinds of nice stuff like this, like uh, tire plates and clubs. Just a fun thing to collect, really. Really a fun thing to collect. Awesome.
We're at the Lars Anderson Auto Museum. That's the, that's the name of this place. And as we've been here, we have noticed that you can see stalls in here. He said, like, when the horses were in distress or whatever, they needed a little bit more care, they would put them in there and have the drains over them, up, washed them off, cleaned them, looked after them. Beautiful. I've seen this car many times in magazines. Uh, 33 models. Beautiful. Love it. I guess it races in the race of gentlemen. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's something that probably all hot rodders look towards is that style. For me, it is anyway. I look towards that style. Huh? Oh, God, would like that. Guy Meister. He's in the, you know, he's in the dirt track. And we might even have one just like that. 55, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. These little toys right here, I guess they're not toys. <laughs> they're works of art is what they are. They're works of art. Um, I want to make something like that when I go home, you know. To me, I, as, I, as I look at it, I look at them, there's a lot of work in them little things, you know. There's a lot of using your brain for certain things. Um, I was looking at it and I said, Eve, we got the wheel drilled out, we got scoops for the wheels to take the air. Well, the scoops were explaining to me they were door poles. Exactly, that's what they are. They're a door pole. You know, you pull the door right on the side of the wheel, you see the three holes, and you get the little scoop there. Well, that's a door pole. Awesome. We made everything in that. I think they're really cool. Can't go wrong with the 39 or the 44. We have a 35, 5 Gorgeous. These are my kind of tires up here, like that, that. I like them all. Love them all. As we go here, this is a car here. Races. In the race of, race of gentlemen, I guess. And uh, it was built by a 10 year old kid, they said. 12 year old kid. Well, I've hired him. <laughs> <laughs> He's hired. He did a fantastic job. You know what I mean? He did a fantastic job. And as I look at this car, as, as, you know, as I look at this car, you look down and you look where the where the wishbone has been split and welded on. You see that frame rail? That frame rail has been turned around. It used to go the other way. The channel would be on the inside. They turned the frame rails and put the channel on the outside. That just goes to show you that anything can be done. All you have to do is look for it and think about it in your brain. Just because the frame rails turned in, the channels on the inside, it doesn't matter if you turn it over the other side. You know why? Because they just showed me. <laughs> that 12 year old kid just showed me if you turn the frame rails around the other way. Little 32 Ford drill up there with the section. And what I mean by section, I mean it's been cut off and shortened. That's what I mean by section. This stuff in here, I really enjoy the signs and the gas pump and the big bulbs. You know, logo. It just takes you back. It takes you back. I really like this stuff. I would love to have, like, I, my friend of my garage is all covered and, and uh, signs. And, you know, me and Jolene actually bought some stuff this weekend. And uh, we like this stuff. It shows history. And, like we always say, you have to respect the past and look forward to the future. And when I say that, all you have to do is look back in the past and see what's happened, what someone has done to know whether it's good or bad. And I like good, you know what I'm saying? Let's go around here and show you a little bit more. The workmanship in this building, as we go through here, there's names on the back, on the wall, on there. Remember the horses that they had, that's the name of the horses. I told them I sleep in the basement, this place, beautiful. We're gonna go downstairs. Stuff like that, you know? A nice wooden sign with the wheel written on it. What would you pay to have that? I love it. You know, see this way. We have we have some drivables over on this side. They drive these cars. And uh, I don't blame them a bit. They drive these cars. From my understanding, this family bought a new car 
every year. The grand opening antique auto museum, Lars Anderson Parish, 1949. 1949. Wow. I'm, you know what? Uh, from as, as I'm walking through here, I'm beginning to realize, as he tells me, this man bought a car every year, that the man must have had money. You know what? I'm glad that he had money, because this stuff wouldn't be here unless he did. So hats off to Mr. Lars Anderson. I appreciate you buying all these cars every year and putting them here. Awesome. You cannot say anything about somebody other than good, because this stuff is here for us to learn and look at. I guess it gives me chills to my bones, you know, for a man to buy a car every year and keep them and so everybody can look at it. Lars Anderson must have been a good man. I think, like, of all these cars that he has here, I think I like this one the best. I like this one the best. It looks, you know, it's got no roof on it. Great big engine. The two-seater, you know, the equivalent to a two-door, you know, roadster. And it's 1907 Fiat Tapo Tipo. I did not know that the French were leading the world back then. Did not know that in the automobile, but they were obviously. Cars are awesome. And as we look at these cars, you see the fenders on them. That's not metal. That's leather. That's leather. Crazy. If you can't see the carriage in the in the car, you're blind. <laughs> right? If you can't see the carriage in the car, you're blind. More leather on the fenders, you know? More leather on the fenders. And they perfected the round glass then back in 1905. And here we are. We have uh, we have a after 1950 1950 some we had curved glass, I think 1949 50 Merck. We started having curved glass. 1905. So if anybody wanted to make curved glass, or the automobile industry wanted to make curved glass for their cars, they would have looked towards the past, wouldn't they have? <laughs> they would have looked towards the past. This in here shows their, their office, you know? 1924 Renault. Renault, whatever, you know? It's amazing that, you know, people, or this man had this much vision back then to buy these cars and have that much vision. This is supposedly the car that made Mr. Henry Ford famous because he raced this guy, Winton, the Winton Bullet, and beat him. And I guess that made Henry Ford somebody to be reckoned with. And certainly he most is. We have some bicycles here. And just cool stuff. And as we look at this thing here, you know, you, <laughs> it's already been done. A motorized scooter. That's just cooler than dang. All the high wheel bicycles, eh? <laughs> when I look at the wheels on the bicycles, I wonder how how men pregnated their girlfriends or their wives. <laughs> because, <laughs> wow, huh? Just little things I can hear. Just the the pins and the, the metals and the the pictures to show stuff like the little lanterns. Beautiful. That bicycle I've never seen a bicycle that nice, you know. The handlebars it looks are to cool. me like it's got porcelain on it. It's porcelain, I would say that would, that bike is porcelain. Wow, wow. Because it's chipped. You can see how it's chipped there, baby. Looks to me like it was porcelain. Gorgeous. I'm gonna show you something over here, right quick. You don't think it's, you don't like it? 
right? We, we had a good kick out of it. Oh, yeah. Supposedly, this was one of the family's favorite cars, the 1905 CGV. And they would always take this car, this one here behind this post. And as we look way in there and the door is open, it's got a little poo chair. <laughs> Nowadays, we call that a pest jug. We piss in the jug and throw it out the window. <laughs> huh? That's what the trailer park boys do anyways. Huh? A little pest jug. But then that's where it started, you know? Crazy. Had a little poo chair. Now again, you call it a pest jug. One thing I do like about the cars, he didn't start restoring them. He just, he drove them and left them. And then you see, I mean, this, this car here has leather fenders on it. I came in here and I first thought that they were all metal, but no, they're leather. And Jolene picked up on that, picked up on that. And I would put Jolene in more of the videos because she's about a lot better looking than I am. But she has to run the camera. Somebody's got to run the camera, right? Is that right, Jolene? Right. Somebody's got to run the camera. Yeah. You want to go back up front and show them that picture up top? Yeah. I want to get the big picture up top and show them that. Beautiful piece of art. It's a beautiful piece of art. You know how I know that picture's great? Because it inspires me. You have to be great to inspire. Look at the, the carving on behind this wall here. Wow. Of the horses and the cars with the clock in the middle. And the seats on either side. Time is worth more than money. How much time would it take to make that? So when you go looking around at places like this, be respectful, don't touch anything, and realize that the time invested in each one of these cars are just over the top. I really enjoyed this place. It makes it makes it all worth it and it inspires me to go home and have fun you know that's what it does and the people are really good here too were they not Jolene yeah they really were really good awesome explained everything nicely it was awesome took us around up top showed us everything if you ever get a chance to come here I suggest you do Lars Anderson Museum and the building is beautiful outside I mean there's more than just the cars uh, there's visual and good people I'd like to come back here someday. Uh, cheers, everybody. Just another museum that we really enjoy. You have to respect the past and look towards the future. If you don't know what you're doing, just look back. It'll tell you. Have a good one. Cheers. <laughs>